I remember um, in the retreat organized in Rome, there were about uh, 70 children. And um, they were given a homework to do during the retreat. And after the retreat, The day before, they went to a grocery store nearby and bought a bag of uh, corn, seed, seeds of corn. And uh, people usually buy in order to make popcorn, but they did not have the intention to make popcorn. <laughs> they bought a bag of it. It's about 1,000 uh, grains of corn inside. And in the morning of uh, the fifth day, they offer to each uh, person one grain of corn. Children and adults alike. And they are supposed to bring it home and plant it in a pot. <laughs> they make sure they, 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 they are supposed to uh, come and visit the, the seed of corn every day and give some water. And uh, 10 days after the planting, they may, they, they may see already a young plant of corn with uh, two or three leaves. And they should come and talk to the plant of corn. And the first question they may uh, ask the plant of corn is uh, this one. My dear little plant of corn, do you remember the time you were a tiny seed? You know, we ask, we ask the, the young plant of corn. And the young plant of corn may, may have forgotten it. And the young plant of corn may look up, <laughs> very surprised. Me, a grain of corn? I don't believe it. <laughs> you know, the plant of corn, they don't speak English like we do here. <laughs> They don't speak Italian either. <laughs> but they, are, they have the way of uh, talking, the way of communicating. So if you are very attentive, you can, you can understand what it tries to tell you. So the plant of corn will look up, very surprised, and said something like, me, a little grain of corn? I don't believe it. And then you, you have to help her. Because you know, you have uh, planted the seed of corn. You have come every day and water the seed of corn. You know very well that is the truth. So you try your best to, to help him, to help her, the young plant of corn, to remember. Listen, my dear. I remember very well the time when you were a tiny seed of corn. They had given it to me during the retreat, and I planted you in this spot. And I have waited several days before you sprout and put forth the first leaf. So I know very well that you had been, you had been a grain of corn. 
So with your help, the plant of corn will be able to remember and acknowledge the fact that she had been one th- at one time a grain of corn. And if you do better, when you look at the plant of corn, even if you don't see the grain of corn anymore, you know that the grain of corn is still there somewhere. The grain of corn has not died. Because if the grain of corn had died, the plant of corn could not have been there. So you know that uh, somehow, somehow the grain of corn is still alive in the plant of corn. And with, if you look deeply into the plant of corn, you can still see the grain of corn in it. It doesn't have the form of a grain anymore, but it's still alive. It is in the grain of corn. And you know very well that the plant of corn is a continuation of the grain of corn. You are intelligent enough to know to know it, that the plant of corn is a continuation of the grain of corn. And you tell the plant of corn, I know the grain of corn in you is not dead, it's still alive. You don't see it, but you, you have come from it. And I, when I look at you, I see the grain of corn in you. If you are a practitioner of meditation, you can see very well the seed of corn present in the plant of corn. And when you look at yourself, into your body. What do you see? You don't believe that at one time in the past you were a tiny seed also. You were a very tiny seed in the womb of your mother and much smaller than the grain of corn. And you don't remember that. <laughs> so Thay is helping you to remember the time you were a very tiny seed in the womb of your mother. And you are a continuation of that seed. And if you look uh, deeply, you still see that seed in you, still alive. When you practice meditation, you can see many things that other people cannot see. Do you remember that wonderful time you spent in the womb of your mother? Maybe you have a vague uh, memory of that time. It's so comfortable there. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. The temperature is not right. And it's very soft. And you spend about nine months in that uh, wonderful abode in Vietnamese uh, and in Chinese we call uh, that place in the womb of your mother, the palace of the child. Tu Kung means the palace of the child. It's so wonderful, so comfortable place to be in. The most wonderful thing is that you did not have to worry about anything. You did not think of the past. You did, did not think of the future. You don't, you did not think of eating, drinking, because uh, everything was done by your mommy. She drank for you, she ate for you, she breathed for you. 
you did not have to do anything at all. And your father was taking good care of your mother. And it is possible for us to remember that time when you were a tiny seed in the womb of your mother. The day when your mother was aware that you were there, inside of her, she was so happy. She bloomed like a flower, and love is born in, in her. Although you have not learned English, but she already talked to you in English. She said something like, Darling, I know you are there. I am very happy. She is practicing the first mantra, the second mantra. <laughs> And your presence uh, brought a lot of uh, joy to your mom and your dad. You were very tiny, and yet you are the object of love. And your mother was very careful. She stopped drinking alcohol. She stopped uh, smoking, because she knew that doing so will harm uh, you inside. That is out of love. And she did not wait, uh, stay up too late in the evening, in the, in the night. She tried to do things um, uh, gently. And she cared about what uh, she eat. She selected the good things to eat only. Because she knew that eating something that is not good for her, it will be not be good for you. So there's a lot of love a lot of care from the part of your mother. And your father was equally happy, and she took care, good care of your mother. He did not dare to say anything that make your mother worry or anger, angry. Because if your mother was angry, and you inside, you get angry also. So out of love, your mother, your father was very mindful not to say or not to do anything that make your mom suffer. Because if he make your mom suffer, he make you suffer. So love is a great. And many of us do not remember that time. The moment when you were born is a very difficult moment for you for your mother and uh, for your father. It took uh, a lot of pain for her, for you to come out. And when you come out, they, they cut the umbilical cord because uh, you were connect, you had been connected to your mother by a long cord, cord. The air that your mother breathed come through you, through that uh, umbilical cord. The food that your mother ate went to you through that umbilical cord. It's quite long. And when you were born, they cut the umbilical cord. And you have to be on your own from that moment. You have to eat by yourself. She cannot eat for you anymore. You have to drink for yourself. By she cannot drink for you anymore. And you have to breathe for yourself. She cannot breathe for you anymore. It's so difficult for you. It's so difficult for her. And it was a very dangerous moment. You had to learn how to make your first in-breath. It's not easy for a child, for a baby. There was some liquid in your lungs. And if you could not get it out 
of your lung, you cannot take in your first in breath. So you try your best. If you did not succeed, you will die. So that is a very uh, critical, difficult moment for you, for your mother and so on. But happily, you have survived. You were able to expel the liquid from your lungs and take in the first in-breath. You don't remember that moment. That is helping you to remember. Like uh, you are helping the young plant of corn to remember. Although you have uh, two arms, two feet, a mouth, a nose, but you still need someone to feed you, to help you, to make you warm, to make you comfortable. And that uh, that was uh, provided by your mother, your father. And uh, what uh, I would like to remind you today is that uh, during the time you were in the womb of your mother, your mother from time to time talk to you. And although you had not learned English, you understood. There is other way of communication. Sometimes uh, you would like to, to remind your mother that you were there. So you gave a kick. It means Mommy, I'm here. And she got the message. She said, Darling, I know you are there. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes she, she may forget. And uh, when you have grown up to be a little boy or a little girl, you might do the meditation practice that you want the little plant of corn to do. You want the little plant of corn to look deeply and to see herself as a small grain of corn and to know that uh, she is a continuation of the grain of corn. And they want to y- you to know that you have come from a very small grain planted by your mother and your father. And you are the continuation of that grain. It means you are a continuation of your father and your mother. You believe that your mother is outside of you. Your father is outside of you. But that is only part of the truth. The truth is that your mother is in you. Your father is in you, in every cell of your body. And wherever you go, you carry your father and your mother with you. And when you smile, your father and your mother in you smile. When you cry, your father and mother cry with you. And when you are happy, your father and mother are happy in you. And when you suffer, your mother and your father suffer with you. And if uh, you practice uh, better, you see that not only your father and mother are in you, but all generations of ancestors are in you. Every time you are able to take in one in-breath, and feel happily, all your ancestors in you feel feel happy. When you are able to make a step full of uh, stability and freedom and joy, all your ancestors in you rejoice. 
So you are not practicing for yourself alone. You are practicing for your parents and your ancestors. When you hear the small bell, please uh, stand up and bow to the Sangha before you go out and continue this uh, Dharma discussion. <laughs>